All right, here to finish up now our Osteichthys group. Uh, get into our lobe finned fish today. So up to this point, you should now be sort of very knowledgeable on the ray finned fish, the Ectinopterygians. And now we're gonna get into our lobe finned fish. So uh, we know that this group is extinct. Yeah, Acanthodes. Uh, now we look at this branch right here in yellow. So everything we've covered up to this point has been within this green category. So the Plumptiriformes, the Chondresti, the sort of the gars, the bowfins, the Tilios fish. So all of these are within their own branch, but another branch uh, kind of diverged off and has a very, very different. Uh, history and a very, very different uh, trajectory here. So again, those are all the ray fin fish. Now we look at the uh, Sarcopterygian group, right? And, and there's two that we're going to focus on today, the Actinistia group and then the Dipnoi group. These others are transitional organisms that are no longer with us, but, but they did have a, an important uh, part in the evolution of uh, what we call tetrapods. So I'll get into that in a bit, but let's go focus on these two here. So the Sarcopterygians, the lobe finned fish. So we know that they're going to have not the little rays, but they actually have bones that make up these fins. So they're large fleshy fin fish. And uh, one of the most famous groups, what we call the Actinistia group, which are the coelacanths. So coelacanths are these uh, sort of well-known, well, maybe not, I'm not gonna say well-known, but at least to science, very uh, interesting biological sort of uh, living, quote unquote, living fossil. That's not quite an accurate description, but uh, that's kind of how they're viewed many times, these coelacanths. So coelacanths were thought to be extinct. So there's uh, Cretaceous fossils, where we knew that they were different than the ray fin fish. And then they were quote unquote discovered in 1938 and again in 1998. So there were fishermen uh, caught these uh, fish. So they were sort of unknown to science except for the fossil record until 1938, uh, which in uh, I think off the coast of South Africa somewhere they caught in Latimeria. Uh, so, unknown to science until that time, as far as being an extant species. And then in another ocean, they found this second species in 1998. So um, again, they've been around for a long time, relatively unchanged from the Cretaceous area, or I should say Cretaceous era, uh, but they're, they're now with us, right? We know that they're in these oceans, uh, these sort of very, very ancient fish here. So, uh, I couldn't find a really good video that shows them actually swimming uh, the way I wanted to show, but if you were to see these fish swim, it looks like they're walking, like they extend out these two and then the other two and then the other two and the other two. So it, it looks like a, an animal, like a, uh, have you ever seen a dog try to swim or an animal walk? That's kind of how they use their fins. So it's very different than the undula undulation that we see in, and the ray fin fish, right? Because again, there's bones, there's hinges. So these, these fins can move differently with more force than these little rays, the ray fin fish. So when we talk about the ray fin fish, uh, we know that they have swim bladders of various different uh, you know, sizes and functionalities, um, normally for buoyancy. Well, we don't see that with these groups, right? The coelacanths have a, um, it's basically like an air bladder, but it's filled with fat. So it's not filled with air. They're not trying to use that at all for respiratory. They're using it for buoyancy. So kind of like sharks that used oil to remain buoyant. These fish have these fat filled livers, or, uh, I should say fat filled, not livers. Fat filled livers are from sharks, fat filled lungs. Um, that serve as this hydrostatic organ. It helps them remain buoyant in that water column. 
and they also have that sort of remnant left over electroreceptor, kind of like the ampullae of Lorenzini. So they're viewed kind of as very primitive fish, but at the same time, they have um, some things that we don't see in the ray fin fish. So again, just uh, it's a different phylogenetic branch from this group, this bony fish. So that was the, again, the coelacanths, the actinistia group. The second group are the uh, dipnoid group, what we call the lungfish, in a weird species as well, right? So there's different species of lungfish, Australian, African, the most well-known is the African. South American is probably the, the least well-known. And then this extinct form, the Devonian fish. But again, uh, uh, most of the discussion will link back to this African lungfish, right? So uh, these are quite unique in the, in the fact that um, they are more closely related to tetrapods than any other type of fish. And what is a tetrapod? A tetrapod is a four-legged animal, a frog, uh, a lizard, um, uh, a lion, these kind of tetrapod organisms. Their heart has more in common with tetrapods than it does with other fish. Right? It has a divided atrium. So that's going to give us some internal physiological modifications to tolerate being out of the water a little bit longer. So um, just different variations here. The Australian lungfish has gills. And it's not dependent on air for breathing. So it can, it can breathe just, just uh, fine. It's not, it doesn't have to gulp air, right? The better known African form does gulp air. It has to have some sort of air mechanism to, to breathe. So they're fish, but they breathe air like uh, kind of like what you or, you or I would do. Right? Um, I have this picture here. It'll make more sense once you watch the little associated videos. This is the burrow of a lungfish. They kind of make this little cocoon. They can survive very harsh, dry conditions. Um, and again, they can extend their life without being actually in water, right? Because they can extract air from the, from the atmosphere just like you and I. So really weird type of fish. Uh, this is... Again, an, ex an extinct form, the Devonian lobe fin fish uh, that literally actually used these kind of as, as legs. And again, you can see kind of this sort of progression. Uh, we're going to look at some of these other uh, tetrapods as we get into future chapters. These are the sort of the intermediary forms that go from fish then to amphibians. So important group evolutionary wise. So we know we have our lungfish, and then we start to see these uh, sort of modifications to where we are gonna be actually now walking on the four legs. So again, this link back, this evolutionary sort of uh, precursor to tetrapods. So with this, I'm gonna conclude our discussion now on the bony fish. I'll let you soak in the information, watch the videos, um, hopefully gain an appreciation for the family tree of, of, of vertebrates here. And again, we're basically now ready to get to this branch right here, right? This, uh, these tetrapods, these primitive tetrapods that will give rise to my favorite groups, uh, which are the amphibians, and then the precursor to the reptiles, and we'll start to kind of continue from there. So um, with this, I'll, I'll terminate then the osteichthys group. And again, I'm not doing it justice. There's still a lot, a lot, a lot more to cover, but for limitations on time for the semester, uh, I'll, I'll stop here. So I'll let you kind of uh, learn this stuff, take some time. Uh, be safe. I know there's a, it's a lot of mess out there, so be safe. Uh, you have a good excuse now to stay home and, and learn about fish. Yeah. So with that, you'll have a great evening, and I will see y'all next time.